Sports on. Don't have an exact cross street of that gas station, but in that general vicinity, they were chasing him down Ontario Avenue when he pulled into the gas station and again, carjacked this truck, a heavy duty truck that is now on the run here, westbound 91 freeway, guys. Heavily tinted windows, you really can't see what's inside, and we have no idea whether there were other passengers inside, potentially even a child or a baby. See, you have no idea. We hear about these stories so often where somebody carjacks a vehicle with innocent people inside the car. Again, we have to remind you, this is a pickup truck that was at the gas station, presumably being filled with gas, so we have to assume that we're working with a full tank of gas in that pickup truck. A very dangerous situation, a lot of unknowns. And like I said, that all of that information leads me to believe that they are gonna dedicate more resources to this because the suspect behind the wheel here is obviously very dangerous, must be taken off the road. We've already seen some of that erratic driving. You can see him doing still 100 miles per hour in light traffic, but that's gonna change here, of course, the further west we get on the 91 freeway, 105 miles per hour. You're right. You're right, he's already coming up on Anaheim Hills, covering a lot of real estate in a short amount of time here, even using the shoulder to get around whatever traffic is in his way here. Again, he is on a two lane express side of the 91 freeway, the number one and two straddling that single dotted white line there at, uh, I mean, this is incredible. That is an accurate speed. We're pushed all the way in here. He is doing about a buck to maybe even 110 miles per hour here. So really dangerous speeds, can't under uh, 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 score that enough. Just a dangerous situation here. But at these speeds, we say this all the time, you would much rather see it on the freeway than some of the erratic driving just that we saw in a few minutes on surface streets. If this gets off the freeway, I really worry what kind of damage he could do on surface streets. So if they could keep him on the freeway, that'd be great, but for the time being, they are not even in the vicinity, and you can see the moves that he is doing here. I mean, this is very dangerous, very erratic driving. Almost hit that car right there, cutting people off, and he doesn't even have any police behind him. No lights and sirens. He is just booking it at, you know, uh, you know, just going as fast as that truck will travel, I think, with the helicopters overhead. Yeah, we're dealing with a lot of a lot of unconfirmed information. Obviously, we're speculating a little bit. Anytime you hear the word road rage, you have to wonder whether the person is in their right state of mind. Are they under the influence? Is it something like that? Or is this a larger crime spree that is underway here in Corona this afternoon? We're now into the Anaheim Hills area where he is still riding that shoulder to get around the very few cars in his way. They're not really even in his way, but he is just about to off-road here to get around the few cars that there are in those express lanes. For some reason, he doesn't want to pull over to the right here. Again, he's got the whole freeway to himself. Why he's using that shoulder, I have no idea. But again, the information that we have received from police is that this was a road rage incident that resulted in a hit and run. And our assignment desk did get some information that this may also involve a robbery. So again, this could be part of a larger crime spree, or this could just be uh, yeah, well, I think at this point it's fair to say this is a crime spree because now when you see somebody daring enough and brazen enough to carjack somebody in the middle of the day like that at a gas station just to get away from the cops, uh, obviously this is somebody with uh, uh, probably, and we can't say this for sure obviously, but probably, uh, uh, probably already has a rap sheet if you will.
you called it. Look at those main line. Those main lanes are all full. So now he has to use those express lanes. The main lanes have backed up quickly. That traffic that he's flying past there is barely moving. He's still doing 100 miles per hour past all of those people as he approaches the 55 freeway. That's part of the reason that the freeway slows down right here. It's also a little bit of an incline here. So he is going against traffic. Again, a bulk of that rush hour traffic is coming eastbound. He is going westbound, but you're so right. The further west he gets, the heavier traffic is going to get. And obviously the priority is to uh, end this somehow. But right now I don't see how because they don't even have units in position. And with traffic building the way it is, those units that eventually arrive here are going to have to fight all this traffic. Now it looks like he's taking that transition onto the southbound 55. So it certainly appears we're going to go deeper into Orange County here in the next few minutes as he commits to the southbound side of the 55 freeway, I believe. I would have expected CHP the first. I would have expected CHP to be, to be the first people to arrive here, but that looks like that might be Corona PD. He's shooting. He's shooting. He's got a gun. That's a gun. That's a, that's an assault rifle. That's an assault rifle that just came out of that driver's side window, shooting back at those units. He just shot in the direction of those law enforcement units. That is believed to be Corona PD. I can't confirm that. That's believed to be Corona PD. That was a large long assault rifle that came out of the driver's side of that pickup truck. He is now fleeing at 90 miles per hour and all of those black and whites are at a standstill. We're going to try and get on the south side of the uh, of the freeway here and get better eyes on the driver's side. But guys, we are dealing with obviously, I mean it goes without saying, we are dealing with a major, major criminal behind the wheel of this pickup truck. Flying across the freeway, flying across the freeway. Look at this. Getting off, getting off. And coming at us. He's coming at us. Now he is, look at this. Is he wearing a uniform? Is he wearing a uniform? I, I can't tell for sure. Or it's a, maybe a sports jersey? It's either a sport, okay, maybe it's a sports Okay, it's just a T-shirt. Okay, I thought I saw. I thought I saw an arm patch there. Excuse me. Yeah, I, I just it, it caught me off guard there. Now, obviously, an older gentleman with a goatee wearing a baseball cap, and uh, it does look like maybe a sports jersey or a T-shirt that he's wearing with that gun in his lap. Uh, at least one. Yeah, he's got a gun in his lap there. And now look at this, communicating with the pickup truck next to him, the driver rolling down the window, taking his AirPods out trying to communicate with another driver. Looks like he's asking for directions. He's asking for directions. He's at Tustin Avenue, just off of the 55 freeway, and it looks like he was trying to figure out where he is or where he's going. There are gonna be multiple agencies now that are gonna be working cohesively, hopefully here, in, the, in very short order, to put this to an end. You're talking about Riverside County Sheriff. You're talking about Orange County Sheriffs. You're talking about Anaheim PD, Corona PD, the California Highway Patrol. They will stop at nothing at this point after he just fired that weapon at those units. We don't know if anybody was hit. It was just too, it happened too fast and we did not get a good glimpse at the uh, pursuing officers there, but it appeared to be from what I'm being told, a Corona PD officer that pulled in behind this pickup truck, and as he came to a stop in the middle of the transition there, he pulled out that assault rifle, and look at this, right through the red here, he's making a left turn on two, I think that's going to put him, is that onto the freeway, Rob? I can't tell. Is that a, free, it's a freeway entrance. Going to put him back onto the westbound side of the 91. He wants to get back onto the freeway. That's going to be the westbound 91 freeway. Driver's side window being rolled up now, guys.
they, they will stop at nothing. I think that's fairly obvious at this point, even though we don't see any law, law enforcement in the picture just yet. That's going to change in the next few minutes. They have to work together and triangulate and catch up with him despite all the traffic. But that is going to change, and you're going to see lots of units pursuing this truck. They will even start performing traffic brakes to shut down the freeway if they have to. I'm being told as he shot back at that Corona PD officer, Corona PD fired back at the pickup truck. Now you saw that close up through the driver's side there. It certainly appeared that he was not injured, but there were bullets flying in his direction. So a shootout there on the transition. Corona PD firing their weapons back. This is now an officer involved shooting. They stopped and he kept going again at triple digit speeds, just as he's doing right now in the HOV lane. We again are on the westbound side of the 91 freeway. I don't see any. In fact, Rob, can you pull out? There might be one or two. There's Okay, there's this. That is going to be, uh, Dan, help me out here. Is that an unmarked CHP unit? That might be an unmarked. Let's go ahead and show me the white SUV really quick. White SUV, is that, that's a, that's a, I think that's a supervisor, right? That would be a CHP supervisor, if I'm not mistaken, under the freeway. It could be a canine or either a supervisor. Uh, in any case, that's the white SUV you see, that, that's CHP. There's another black unmarked unit that's behind him. So a couple of unmarked units, and then I think I saw a black and white behind them. I'm sorry, there's a lot happening up here, guys. But from what I've counted, at least three units with their lights and sirens going, two of them look like fairly uh, unmarked vehicles or at least uh, not your typical patrol cars. Uh, one of that may have even been a canine unit. In any event, they are pulling, not pulling back, they are a little bit behind them. Look at this, pulling right up on this person in the HOV lane, still looking for a way to squeeze through here, slowing down with the traffic. It looks like he doesn't really have anywhere to go. Traffic's not exceptionally heavy. It's like moderate traffic right now. Basically, we'd call that stop and go, but he's slowing down with it because he really has nowhere to go with that, that center divider there. So he doesn't even have a much shoulder to work with. Yeah, I, I, as we proceed through this at Chase, guys, I, I go through all of the possible ways in my head that this could possibly end. And I think it's fair to say that most of the typical ways that we're used to seeing these pursuits end are probably not on the list of how this one's going to end. Obviously, we have no idea how exactly it's going to come to an end, but the behavior that we are seeing here is, let's just say, next level. Uh, by the way, we are dealing with multiple agencies even before he carjacked this truck. So despite the information that we received about the, the road rage and the hit and run, that would be a serious enough charge that would warrant a lot of law enforcement, no doubt. But if there was another robbery involved or whatever else, it certainly would make a lot of sense because there was already two helicopters overhead when we were hearing about this pursuit. It included Riverside County Sheriff and Ontario PD. Ontario is nowhere near here. So for Ontario to come down to Corona, that raises lots of questions. Corona PD involved in this now in a big, big way after their units have been fired at. And CHP, before he carjacked this vehicle, was already on the way out via ground and air units with their airplane 
to continue monitoring this pursuit. So he has had a lot of eyes on him for the last hour or so, and obviously things have only ramped up since then. So again, the backstory here is going to be mighty interesting. We're going to have a lot of blanks to fill in as to how all of this started, what other crimes he has been involved with earlier in the day. I think it's going to be a lengthy list in any event, or at least quite serious. In any event, we find ourselves still on the 91 freeway hugging that HOV lane, slowing down when he has to, doesn't have a whole lot of pavement to play with in terms of that left shoulder, but uh, the freeway is going to start to slow down if he stays on the 91, or even if he takes the, uh, let's see, he's coming up, I want to say he's coming up on the 5, right? Yeah, he's coming up on the 5 freeway. Uh, that'll be a big decision for him. He might commit to the 91, uh, which I think if he stays in that lane, he still has an option, I believe. He, I just saw that sign. I think he still has the option of staying on the 91 or getting off and getting onto the 5 freeway. He's over the goal point thinking about it, thinking about switching over, and I think pushing on that sign right there. So if he stays on the, uh, on the left side, if he stays in that left lane, that'll put him on the 91, right side onto the 5. He's staying left, taking the left lane onto the 91, so staying on the 91 westbound uh, where traffic is a little bit lighter, I will say, for the next couple of miles. I mean, you know, just with the knowledge of the high caliber weapon that he's got in his lap there, you just, and, and the way he's willing to use it, if he's willing to fire at police officers, he's willing to fire at anybody who gets in his way. And that's why, as you guys are talking about, it's so dangerous to be anywhere near this. These are all innocent people. If at the very least they could get more units to shut down the freeway, that would be the ideal. I mean, that, by my by my from my perspective, would be the number one thing that they should be doing is shutting down the freeway. I will leave them to make that call, leave it to them. But uh, right now, I don't see even those other CHP units that we saw, they have fallen way back because he's continued these ridiculous speeds. I think he's just blowing up a little dust and dirt there on the side of the lane there. Uh, but uh, all four tires so far appear to be intact. I don't think he's damaged the vehicle in any way. We've seen a lot of close calls, but I don't think he's actually hit anybody. So the vehicle performing great. We have to assume that he's got a full tank of gas. We have to hope that the tank was almost empty and maybe they didn't have time to fill the gas up yet. We don't know. But in any event, he's now starting to shift over to the right maybe trying to get around traffic or maybe thinking about an exit plan. Yeah, Carmenita is going to be the next exit. That might be Carmenita there. So he had the chance to get off the of Carmenita. There's the shoulder that he's going to use to get around traffic as he makes his way through Cerritos. Uh, I think uh, traffic is going to really start to slow down. He's going to be using that shoulder for the next couple of miles. And may oh, really? Uh, I mean, that this is a top-heavy vehicle, as you obviously know, and he is taking some of these lane changes really, really fast. So. Uh, he is obviously very agitated. His adrenaline must be through the roof. And uh, there's Artesia Boulevard, it looks like. Getting off at Artesia.
Red light through the light, cutting off somebody going in oncoming lanes of traffic. Westbound Artesia Boulevard coming up to another red light with lots of cross traffic. Going through the red light again in the wrong lanes. He's going the wrong way on Artesia Boulevard, shifting back over to the correct side of the road there. Continuing westbound Artesia Boulevard. Guys, what we don't see here is any law enforcement yet. None. None of them were able to get off the freeway with them. We have not seen any law enforcement for several minutes. This is so scary. You can't predict, he hasn't established any kind of a pattern, so to be honest, a spike strip. And in this situation, uh, I, I would call it a long shot. Now there are a couple of units that have managed to pull up here on Artesia Boulevard. I think one of them is the same black uh, SUV, perhaps a different agency, can't confirm that. Another black and white behind him. Look at him doing 90 miles per hour on, on surface streets here. About 80 to 90 miles per hour on Artesia Boulevard, coming up on yet another red light here. He's going to skirt around it and go through. Watch this. He's coming up to the crosswalk and now inching his way through here, slowing down for the cross traffic and continuing westbound Artesia with those units behind him. Oh boy. <clears throat> this might be the worst time of the day to see this happening. I mean, and I mean the worst. Three to four o'clock, people getting off school, as you said, people coming home from work. The streets are obviously very busy. We haven't seen a whole lot of pedestrian traffic here, but he is putting so many lives in danger. And I just worry about what happens when he comes to another stop. If he feels threatened or if he stops the vehicle once again, what I mean, his options are going to be limited, but he's the one with the gun. And so, you know, oh, Oh, forget about it. I mean, he's blowing through. He's slowing down for some intersections and blowing right through others. It just takes one wrong move if you have cross traffic coming through here. And he's so, look at this, threading the double yellow line into oncoming lanes of Artesia Boulevard again, just trying to get past the couple of vehicles here. It's not even like a big traffic jam. He is just trying to flee those units about 100 yards back. I mean, my mind immediately goes to the wild and crazy chase we covered in Fullerton just a few months ago back in November. We all know how that one ended, a much different situation, but still, I mean, that was when we literally saw three carjackings in one afternoon in one pursuit. So, you know, this guy's limited. Look, people biking across the street here. He's taking a left turn, left turn off of Artesia Boulevard onto the southbound side of Woodruff Avenue. Southbound side of Woodruff where he maybe even saw those people and just figured, let me just get off of Artesia here. He made a wild left there, and when we can, we'll pull back once again and just see if any of those units have managed to keep up with him from the side, from the looks of it, I would say, uh, not yet. Look at this, look at this, a whole bunch of, look at this, a whole group of kids crossing the street, school letting out here, this is the worst. This is the worst. I, this is the worst. Let's just hope he continues through at a slow clip here, lets the kids cross, and just keeps going. Nobody here has any idea what has happened or what is going on inside that pickup truck. Please just keep going. Please just keep going. He's stopping. He's stopping. He's trying to maybe communicate with that white SUV. Look at this. There are a bunch of units now. There they are. They've caught up now. A whole different story as they're going to... Okay. So I... 
the first question I have, uh, and Rob will help me out with this when he can, uh, I want to, and, and with the help of our assignment desk, I want to get a better idea of what other agencies are involved here. Because, like I said earlier, there are going to be numerous agencies, as there likely were, right there just at that intersection alone, uh, a, a, a whole bunch of uh, different agencies. Certainly we're in Cerritos' jurisdiction, so Cerritos PD, that was actually Corona and Anaheim still. I'm being told still Corona and Anaheim, still the primary agencies here that have managed to catch up with him here in Cerritos, now taking a turn on to, uh, let's, I want to say that's Okana Avenue. Uh, we'll confirm that here in a second. That's South Street. Made a uh, turn onto South Street, going northbound on South Street. The good news, guys, is that there were about a half a dozen, at least a half a dozen armed units behind him that they will be in a position now to uh, mitigate whatever we are about to see here. But here he is, face-to-face -face in oncoming lanes of traffic with more unsuspecting motorists, completely innocent bystanders, as he just tries to squeeze through. Those units are going to, I mean... What are the options? I mean, you have to wonder, what are the options for these units? They are ready for anything, but how do they strategize to bring this to an end any quicker than we see any other chase? Because this guy has to be taken off the road as soon as possible. We know that. That's a given at this point. Coming to another stop at South and Autry, and he keeps going. He's got a half a dozen units making the left turn with him. Look at him, very nonchalant. One hand on the wheel. What's on his? What's in his left hand? You you guys might have a better shot than I do with the monitor. Okay, so he's on a much narrower residential street. Yep, another school zone. A much narrower residential residential street on Michelson Street. Uh, coming up on, I mean, he's not really familiar with this area, so he's going to probably make up some of these turns, just kind of go, I mean, but this is a fairly enclosed neighborhood here, so this street might lead to a major, uh, this one that he turned on to might actually not, uh, that looks like a, a playground that I just saw, it looks like another school, is that a school, Rob? It's another school, passing another school, I don't see any kids around, here comes that, I think is, C A. that's Anaheim, Anaheim PD. Anaheim PD overhead, Anaheim police on the ground, and Corona PD following this guy to the bitter end. Yeah. Yeah, just as I thought, he I think he's a little bit trapped in this neighborhood. Not exact. Look at this. Firing more shots. More shots at those units. Firing at least two more shots. Pointing right something came something came flying off the either back of the truck or he threw it out. Did you see that, Rob? I think he ran over something too. I think he might have run over some trash or debris, but we just saw two more flashes from the barrel of that gun fired right in the direction of those officers. Hundred miles per hour, Colleen and Ellen. Hundred and ten miles per hour down Bellflower Boulevard. Oncoming lanes of traffic through Bellflower and Del Amo. We're in Lakewood, and you start to see a little bit of smoke coming from the brakes as he, he, a hard break there as he came up on that intersection. Uh, so a little bit too hard. You saw a little bit of smoke emanating and yet now he's continuing through uh, Lake, through Del Amo rather, continuing south, or northbound, I'm sorry, northbound Bellflower through all of these red lights, hoping to lose those officers. When we get a chance, we'll widen out once again to see if any of them have managed to keep up after that last shooting. And it looks like they have fallen back again they have fallen back, trying to figure out, I, and certainly we hope that nobody was hurt there, but 
That's a very real possibility. He fired at fairly close range. Uh, you guys might be able to re rack that video when you get a chance, uh, and we can maybe see. Uh, he turned a tight corner there, and then he stopped the vehicle. If he was able to see those officers from the position where he shot that gun, that was fairly close range. Certainly hope for the best for those officers. We're continuing through another major intersection, the wrong way through another red light, continuing northbound Bellflower Boulevard. <clears throat> the answer is zero. There is no possibility that they will back off of this guy intentionally. There is no possibility that this is going to end any other way than either him going to jail tonight or worse. So that, that, that's, that's the given that I could tell you. Uh, but how we get to that point is certainly up for grabs. By the way, I have to correct myself. I said northbound. He's traveling southbound on Bellflower. I think for the last couple of minutes I was saying northbound. He's traveling southbound ever since he made that turn out of that neighborhood. So traveling uh, closer to uh, Seal Beach here as he makes his way through Lakewood and now continuing here, uh, slowing down where he has to, but really with no hesitation, jumping into the wrong lanes of traffic and continuing to blow through red lights. I apologize, Ellen, you mentioned something there. You asked me a question. I didn't quite catch it. What, what was that? Well, it's a good question, and there it is. There it is, the 405. He's jumping on the 405, and that, I think, will be the northbound side of the 405. It sure is. It sure is. He is taking the 405 northbound, and we are back on the freeway. The good news with this, uh, aside from the obvious, is that CHP will now be, with maybe a little bit of luck on their side, maybe in a better position to shut down the freeway. At least shut down the freeway behind him, potentially, even shut down the freeway ahead of him. But this is an all hands on deck situation. They will use every unit at their disposal to shut down the freeway. I have to believe that's the case. They are going to have to call in. My, my anticipation here uh, with limited knowledge, uh, and, and I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, obviously, guys, but the only practical thing that I could think of, uh, and there happens to be one nearby, is for the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, for example, to bring in one of their armored Bearcat vehicles. Presumably, they will need to bring in several armored vehicles to surround this truck. But this is a situation where a pit maneuver ain't going to happen, spike strips are out of the question, all of the things that we're used to seeing, throw that book away. Just take that textbook and throw it out the window. I think this is going to require multiple armored vehicles, ultimately, to surround this truck and potentially box it in unless this comes to an end some other way sooner. But in the meantime, those units are following from a distance. They don't want to get up right behind them, as you mentioned, Alan, because obviously every time they do that, they end up getting shot at. So nobody wants to see that again. They're going to stay back a little bit, not too far. They don't want to lose them, but they will pull back a little bit so they're ready for the end here. 
and now he's off of the freeway at Temple Avenue, by the way, maybe getting back on. There's an opportunity if he makes the right here, another entrance ramp, uh, I believe, in any event, making a turn, a right turn onto westbound Willow Street. Westbound Willow Street at uh, about the speed limit here, slowing down a little bit compared to the driving we've seen earlier on surface streets. In any event, he's now going westbound uh, closer to the Long Beach city limits. <clears throat> That's probably exactly what was going through his head when he got off the freeway because it was already starting to slow down and as we've said already a few times this is the worst time of the day not only for pedestrians but traffic wise and just the potential for risk here is just through the roof. So again, making another random turn, appears to be a random left turn southbound onto Cherry Avenue, southbound Cherry Avenue in Signal Hill as we make our way closer to the shoreline now in Long Beach. Uh, he is, uh, again, slowing down compared to earlier, but still uh, driving very erratically and uh, steering right around anybody in his way. No respect for that red light there, going right through that as well. Uh, crossing Hill Street, and here come those units behind him. You can see that primary unit, believed to be either a canine or a supervisor, that possibly Corona PD, and then you've got several other units from uh, not only Corona, but Anaheim PD as well. So again, several agencies in pursuit, multiple agencies involved in this pursuit in other ways, uh, and as we make our way through Long Beach. Rob, I think the uh, shade is on from that highlight tool. <coughs> uh, we'll, we're, we're, yeah, we're, I'm sorry guys, we're working on, working on that uh, as he's making a right turn now onto westbound PCH, making a westbound turn onto PC, okay. All right, Jake, stand by one second. Uh, Long Beach PD, I'm understanding from our assignment desk, is being notified uh, as they are now uh, as they are now in their jurisdiction. Uh, again, it's almost pointless to count the number of jurisdictions we've been through at this point. Needless to say, we've been through dozens of jurisdictions, but uh, all of them now trying to zero in here on this truck. He is on PCH, westbound PCH, uh, technically westbound. It's obviously uh, a north and southbound highway that goes all the way through LA County, but he is traveling in the westbound direction uh, along PCH. Uh, there will be uh, another opportunity. Uh, in fact, he could even take this all the way to the uh, 605, or the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the 710 freeway uh, here in the next couple of miles if he goes all the way through. I've got uh, some mixed minus issues in my ear, guys. Stand by one second. <clears throat> Coming to a stop. Coming to a stop. Some Somebody just, sh is somebody firing at or is he firing out? See, I, it almost looked like somebody was firing in. Did you see, Rob? Could you tell? Couldn't. Couldn't tell, couldn't tell. It could go either way, but he was firing, maybe firing out through the through the windshield of that truck. I don't know what he was firing at, but it looked like from uh, from from the from up here, it looked like he was firing out of the vehicle. Again, I don't know what he was pointing at, but more shots fired here on PCH. Yep, we're going to stay on the uh, driver's side of the vehicle here as he makes his way through another major intersection. Uh, what was unclear there is what he was shooting at. Because if he was willing to fire through his own windshield, he must have had a target that he was pointing at. We did not see where those bullets ultimately landed. This is the third separate shooting by my count. This is the third separate shooting by my count. And uh, quite frankly, guys, we don't know if anybody has been struck by gunfire over the course of this pursuit yet. It's certainly possible, we just don't have that information yet.
Yeah, doing about a 75 to 80 miles per hour again. This is about the fastest we've seen him on surface streets in quite a while. He was slowing down dramatically as he weaved his way through LA County and then into Long Beach, but now he's on PCH with uh, not a whole lot of traffic in his way, doing about 60 now. I should mention that we have already bypassed the 710 freeway. Uh, there is the possibility that he aims towards the 110 freeway and decides to get on the Harbor Freeway. Uh, and then at that point, he has more options. But in the meantime, uh, we have bypassed the 710. He is still committed to PCH. And anytime you see any traffic in his way, still pulling the same tactic of jumping over the double yellow lines into oncoming lanes of traffic, blowing right through the red lights. The dangerous driving continues, but quite frankly, the scariest moments are when he pulls into a stop or slows down. So I don't know what's worse at this point with this guy. They just need, uh, they need to outnumber him with armored vehicles. And potentially, most likely, this will culminate in a use of force situation because of the, the amount of, uh, the, 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 the dire threat here to everybody in this guy's vicinity is so immediate, the, the danger is so immediate, they have probably, and I say probably because I don't know this for sure, it'd be great to get this from somebody, uh, from an expert, I, I, I have a, a law enforcement officer sitting right next to me who is flying Air 7 this afternoon, Dan, who has 30 years of experience with LAPD. Would I be correct, Dan, in saying that they would be, uh, uh, it would be almost uh, likely at this point that a supervisor has authorized uh, the use of force to fire into that vehicle. Yeah, at, at this point, it's fair to say that gunfire may very well be fired in his direction if they can get units in position to bring to an end. That is certainly a possibility. Uh, a more peaceful resolution would be if they could somehow uh, disable this truck some other way with an armored vehicle. Uh, but the way he's driving and the the way he, the, the you know the the way he's willing to use that gun, all bets are off. I mean. It's really hard to say what's going to happen next. I know we're having some communication, guys. I'm not even sure if you can hear me, if you can hear me. Uh, we're still on PCH. Uh, we've come underneath the 110 freeway. We have left uh, uh, the jurisdiction of Long Beach, and we're now in, I believe, uh, either LA County's Carson jurisdiction or potentially even Torrance as we make our way further west here along PCH. Again, I know we're having communication issues. I cannot hear you guys right now, but the chase is continuing with several units behind.
Oh no, oh no. <coughs> Copy. Nothing on FM4. How many holes are up? No ICOM, correct? Uh, I've got the two-way off. I'm trying to connect on my phone. Shot again. Coming to a stop, coming to a stop. They can't hear me, right? <laughs> Newscopter has to come down. Take Newscopter off. Newscopter has to come off until we come down. Any cops behind them? They're all following, okay. <clears throat> can they, can somebody, uh, can somebody text me a number to, maybe I could try dialing in? Hear me right? Oh gosh, look at this suspect. He's running without the gun, running without the gun. They're gonna take him down here. He's now on Western Avenue. Oh my goodness! 
Oh my goodness, he's on foot trying to carjack somebody else. Trying to carjack somebody else. Whoa. There he goes. Five cops on him. Six cops. No, I'm going to dial in. Give me the number. I got no signal. I'm, I'm Uh, 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 one's on five. Uh, FM one is on four. FM two is on five. The volumes, yeah. Uh, both, both say ICOM. Uh, no, negative. It's over. Can't believe he took the. I can't believe he didn't take the gun. Anybody get hurt? Maybe the cop might have gotten hurt, huh? Was it a bad hit? I almost missed it. We should go back and land and figure it out. <coughs> should we go to Long Beach or go back to Van Nuys?
I I'm back. <coughs> It's not great, but I've got it. Copy. They know. <coughs> it's in and out. Hey guys, well, this was this was something else. I got to tell you, it's a miracle he exited that vehicle without that gun because obviously the threat was so immediate and ending in such a precarious position like this in such a busy intersection. Thank goodness nobody was hurt here. No other innocent bystanders. He sped up to this intersection and intersection slammed into the rear of that. I believe it was an LAPD Harper Division vehicle. I'm not. No, it wasn't. It was a sheriff's vehicle, and uh, and then lost control, crashing into that light pole. Jumped out of the vehicle on foot without the assault rifle, and then you saw him run across the lanes, trying to carjack yet another truck, and that's when. The sheriff's department pounced uh, with a, a couple of other agencies as well. Again, this involved numerous agencies, uh, primarily Corona PD, Anaheim PD, Riverside was involved at one point. CHP played a role as well as the local officers here in LAPD's Harbor Division, LA County Sheriff. Uh, on the edge of Torrance's jurisdiction, although I don't think I've seen any Torrance PD officers, although, what is that unit right there, uh, Rob, on the top of your screen? There are just so many uh, jurisdictions involved here, guys. Such a complicated effort to bring this pursuit to an end, uh, and it happened by happenstance. He just lost control, hit the pole, jumped out, thankfully, without that gun, and fortunately, he is going to jail, and nobody else is getting hurt here. Just uh, an unbelievable ending to an unbelievable chase here in Harbor City. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the fact that nobody that we are aware of has gotten hurt is unbelievable. I don't know that we are confident yet that anybody else was struck by gunfire during the course of this pursuit. You guys might actually have that information. Uh, we were dealing with a, a plethora of technical issues at one point, uh, but I don't know if you've heard. I don't know if anybody uh, in this pursuit has been struck by gunfire. There were several occasions, at least four by my count, uh, that uh, he pulled out that assault rifle out of the driver's side window and started firing in the direction of law enforcement uh, and at one point even firing through his own windshield. I think that was even the fifth shooting. So uh, a dangerous individual uh, taken off of the road this evening and not a minute too soon. Now I've got programming on FM3. Do we want to do a full reset, Rob? Maybe reset the whole ENG package? What do you think? <clears throat> I got nothing on Technic Sonic anymore. Just